Welcome to episode 25 and greetings. I am Fritz. Let me tell you this much right now. We are going to get into some uh, communications like vibes, right? So if you get any kind of EVP or if you don't even know what that stands for, don't listen to this episode. It might really scare you. If you don't know and you're curious, well then come on with me. We're going into the club. Welcome to Fort Fritz. In the club. How you doing? I'm Fritz, joined as always by co-host Man Daddy. Hi. Kaz. Yep. And we're just hanging out. We're going to listen to some uh, albums because I've been on my jams, been on my kicks, and I really want to... Your wanna... jammy jams on. Thank you. Yeah, do you like my pajamas? I'm wearing some as well. Bright pink. Uh, Kaz, uh, you didn't get the memo, right? For no, the pajama I, went, party? I went jean shorts and I, just, I thought, you know, it's Florida and I've got shapely legs, so I'll just you go do. jean shorts. Jean nice. shorts with no shirt, though, so yeah. you are comfortable. Yeah, kind of the uh, the dad mowing the lawn, the embarrassing dad mowing the lawn outfit. Nothing wrong with that. I've seen people at Florida weddings wearing the exact same outfit. I was going to go Porky Pig, like a <laughs> traditional, like, just shirt, no pants. But Porky Pig, right. right. Okay. I figured this is a little bit more presentable, at least for today. Also the Donald Duck. Well, that'd be the Donald Duck as well. Pretty much, yeah. All, like, yeah. Disney characters, just uh, pantsless. Really, yeah. Oh, yeah, they always always got their junk dangling, you just don't see it. Weird pant fetish with them. Well, now that we have this open um, dis- uh, discography, what's it called in uh, Spanish when you go to El the El discography. Places? Yep, El discography when you go to the discotheque. Oh, discotheque. That's discotheque. what it is. Discotheque. Yeah. Yep, discotheque. Disco, disco. Um, we have so many albums here that uh, a lot of you guys haven't heard of before, so uh, do you mind if I play some of my favorites? Oh, I'd love to hear it. Just stay away from the Mayhem album. Okay. You got it. You got uh, please, it. Absolutely. Please. Definitely not. I have uh, a really nice whiskey here. So let me pass that around. Whiskey. And I want you guys to uh, check out this jam from 1944. You will hear extensive use of the theremin before it was invented. This band is called the Shad O'Connertons. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, Jingly. I can feel it a little bit, you know. And the theremin really comes out. Yeah, it's, really very, it's loud, super yeah. loud. The like, seven-minute theremin solo is pretty rad, I think. Yeah, yeah it really, it stretched out. It stretched out a little bit. I like he, it. it was groovy. Um, uh, most people don't know this. I actually invented the world's first acoustic theremin. Really? Yes. Get out of town. It was basically just a person tied to a chair that screams the louder the closer <laughs> I get to them. Uh, just like. <laughs> You know, that's but, amazing. Uh, but you know, it's the same thing. I saw the person with the electronic thing. I'm like, come on, been there, done them. So that. It sort of seems like they like kind of made it more compact, more. Yeah, it is a bit transportation. It's a yeah. bit to transport to get. Also, looks a know? little weird to have someone tied up and screaming and stuff when you get near them. For most people, Kaz, I think I got something you're gonna like. Oh yeah. Yep. This band is called M12259. M12259. Check it out. This is creepy. This sounds creepy. What are you hearing? Describe it to me. This sounds like a malfunctioning computer. This is like what people in the 70s thought future music was going to be. It just sounds like this beeps and boops and the sound of like reels ending their tapes and flapping around. Like Man, this Daddy, is Kaz is absolutely correct. This was created in 1962 and it's called Future Sounds on Computer Waves. At one point, there's a right. guy just saying beep, boop, beep, boop on there. That's not, those aren't real instruments. It's like it's like the origins of dubstep. <laughs> Man, Daddy, check out if you can uh, name this band. Okay. All right, we got. Uh, this is something a little different. Uh huh. It is. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've oh, seen this it's before. It's on the tip of your tongue. Yeah, 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 I, I, maybe you've heard this before. This is from 1997. Eternal Punch Function. You ever heard of Eternal Punch Function? I have. It's so hard to say. <laughs> Eternal. Eternal Punch Function. EPF? I have. Yeah. And Cash. Yeah, EPF. Oh yeah. This is exactly. <laughs> so you've been a fan of them? Oh my god, dude. I'm an F F head. <laughs> Huge F head. <laughs> hey, what's up, my dudes? You jamming to some EPF? Oh my god! Oh, who the hell is this? Uh, oh, I'm Everest Whiskamith. I'm sure you are. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Whoever you are, uh, I, I'm not you. You're you. No, you're me. He, I'm, you're mine. Oh wow. He's the guy. I know. Careful. He likes rhetoric. He's Whoa. the guy. He emailed me, <laughs> and uh, he, he he's been listening to what we've been doing on the podcast. He says he's a realtor. He's got some ideas. Yeah, and you never emailed me back. That, that's Dude, correct. I, that's I never. Everest Whiskamith Infowars at Eagle dot net dot org. You host your email at Infowars. Do you not, man? It's the only reputable server out there. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, my brain hurts right now. I'm turning red from all my supplements. I need to calm down. You're making me angry. You've been doing blasting your watch. I've been blasting my quads today, man. Today was leg day. Never skip leg day. What up, bros? Hashtag Instagram. So, so what I, are you? Yeah, what are you doing here? Anyway, anyway, doing the here. reason I'm here is I got my realtor license last week. Holler! Oh, congratulations! Oh, yeah, thanks, thanks. You uh, didn't respond to my email. That's uh, right. Where I said, "Hey, everyone, I got my realtor license," and no one responded. That's no one. I know. So that's a really general email. Yes. Once again, just like, "Hey, I got uh, my realtor license." Like, okay, good. You cool. know, I thought, you, I thought maybe I'd get some. Hey, congrats, Everest! You're really making moves in your life. You're not just sleeping on your parents' couch anymore in their 18 bedroom mansion. Using all their money, and your mom says you're a disappointment. And you're well, like, you you're not my real those mom, kind Stacey. Of facts, no one's going to respond because they it don't know if personal. you're being honest or right. if you're being yeah, truthful. Uh, when you try to become a realtor, you're not just looking for likes right. on your Facebook page. You want well, to like, like maybe people you're not. Yeah. yeah anyway, I, I guess have, he's right. I I have, have, yeah, this guy's good. He is, I have good. The, he is I, right. I have the license right here. If you want to take a look at it, can I put this over the? Uh, let me. Well, what is going on right now? What? Where? What does that sound? Did you? It's like a an Australian syndicated radio host. Yeah, it's 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 like a Morse code done by someone who has a stutter and doesn't understand numbers at all or letters. It sounds like someone. Uh, it sounds like someone calling bingo from like, it does, like a battleship actually. somewhere or something. Yeah, battleship bingo. Ooh, I like that's that. spooky. Bros. The stakes have never been higher. Battleship bingo. Damn, you gotta, we got to sell that voice, man. I think I know what we're hearing right now. Chris, why are you whispering? Be very quiet. Quiet. Really, Susan? Yes. Be quiet. You don't want to die, do you? No, I don't want to. You don't die, no, do I don't. You? Please stop raising your voice. You said to be quiet. Yeah, maybe. Okay. This conversation's been going right on for a while. Everyone, be cool. Have you heard of UVB seventy six? Oh yeah, yeah. Red, Wait. red, red one. What? Red, red. And the uh, yeah, thing about like she she only wanted like another baby or whatever. And no, she's that's gonna Ace leave of Base. Oh, oh, that she wants is he the baby? baby. <laughs> oh, I love that song. No, you morons. Anyway. For you uneducated, uninitiated out there, UVB-76, also known as The Buzzer, is the nickname given by radio listeners to a shortwave radio station that broadcasts on the frequency 4,625 kilohertz. Wow, that's now, a lot of kilohertz. I know what you're thinking, Ev- yeah, I know what you're thinking, Everest, that's a lot of kilohertz. Yep. Exactly. Yes, that, exactly. You definitely did say it out loud. No, nope. uh, I didn't hear not it. Like a mind reader. I didn't hear it. I read you. No. Nope. <laughs> my psychiatrist told me when I was twelve and wanted to punch my stepmom that I'm a clairvoyant. So you back <laughs> the frick off. <laughs> okay. All right, Everest. <laughs> so I I know what you're thinking, Everest. What is this UVB seventy six? Well, that radio signal has reportedly been broadcasting since the late 1970s. The earliest known recording of it is dated back to 1982, ever since curious owners of shortwave radios first discovered the signal. It has broadcast a repeating buzzing noise. Every few years, the buzzer stops, and a Russian voice reads a mixture of numbers and Russian names. Whoa. What? Really? I know. Crafty Russians are always doing something, aren't they? You know what's crazy right. about those world radios, too? With the super long antennas, uh, you can pick up any AM band because they travel the farthest. I was looking at the specs for the house, and you do have one. Oh, Because oh, I have is. a real estate license. Really? If Angela's here, she could probably point out where it was, but she's not here right now. Who's Angela? Is she hot? You don't need to know that. Anyway, a mysterious message came through. Christmas Day... 1997. It read, Yeah, UVB 76. Yeah, UVB 76. 18008 Bromal. 74 14. Boris, Roman, Olga, Mikhail, Anna, Larissa. 7427914. Bromal. And then Bromal spelled out with, with the, uh, what, what do they call that? The phonetic. That's the right. NATO phonetic alphabet. Yeah. That's right, bros. Sounds like so, it sounds like something a frat guy would call. Is, 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 what's up, bro, mall? What's up, bro, mall? We're going to go to the mall, bro, mall. We're going to be my bro, mall at the mall. <laughs> All right. It's only the best reality show on frat TV, bro, mall. 
Frat TV is uh, like if I had a waking nightmare, it'd be the concept of Frat TV. That'd be it. Now, instead of shutting down with the fall of communism in Russia, UVB 76 became even more active since the millennium voice messages have become more and more frequent. Now, it's easy to dismiss the signal as pre recorded or a looping tone, but what listeners quickly realized was that UVB 76 is not a recording. The buzzer noise is generated manually. Ooh, really? I know, right? Maybe. The reason for hearing telephone conversations and banging noises in the background of the signal is that the speaker creating the buzzer is constantly placed next to a microphone, giving the world an eerie insight into whatever cavern the signal originates from. Ooh. Do they know what country this is coming from? Russia. Really? It had to be. So if, always if, the Russians, man. So if we had like the the uh, the, the technology from uh, uh, the dark, the first Batman movie with Christian Bale, where they can listen to the cell phone, everybody, so they could plug into that mic and they could see the actual room that yeah. this is all being yeah. broadcast from. I have one of those. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. When was that? Two thousand three. I'm not going to tell you <laughs> like though, because you're back. mean to me. That's not that far back, kid. <laughs> Yeah, 2003 was 14 years ago. We're that's talking about the Michael time. Keaton one. That's a long time ago. Oh, the Michael, <laughs> the Michael Keaton, Keaton, one. Keaton one was a long time ago. Yeah, that's ago. true. Dance was that 89? The, the first uh, one? Uh, yeah, 88, 89. Tim Bur- uh, Prince's Batman? Yes. Yeah, it was 89, I think. Prince's Batman, 1989. Prince's Batman. Prince, the Prince's that's Batman. That's what that is. call that. There's Prince's <laughs> Batman. Online chatter about the signal increased in 2010 as bizarre broadcasts were issued on an almost monthly basis. Snippets of Swan Lake were played. A female voice counted from one to nine. A question mark was transmitted in Morse code. And strange telephone conversations were overheard by the receiver. What? Weird. They're just messing with us at this point once again. You know, they're just like, I mean, what, I mean, are are they, are they just like begging for us to translate this code or are they just messing with us? So there's more here. Damn. Since October of 2010, the station has changed location. The flurry of activity and voice messages preceded the most important development in the signal since it began broadcasting in the 1970s. It seems likely that the heightened activity of 2010 was related to the establishment of the signal in a new location. The new call sign was read out after the move as MDZHB. Previous triangulation efforts had led to the discovery of the transmitter for UVB-76, it was a Russian military base on the outskirts of Pavarovo, a small town 19 miles from Moscow. Now, here's where it gets really creepy, man. This is it's already pretty creepy. creepy. Strap in, because it's about to get real scary. Promo. <laughs> After the station changed location, two groups of urban explorers and UVB-76 followers traveled to the remote Russian town in an attempt to visit the military bunker that the signal had originated from for over 30 years. When they reached the town, a local man told them about the storm of 2010, where one night a dense fog rolled in, and then suddenly the military outpost was evacuated within 90 minutes. No way! Really? 90 Can minutes are all like... Oh, bro, we need to get Delta here. And that was in 2010 when the popularity was starting to peak on the internet. When the internet discovered them and they triangulated the location of this mysterious town. They had to get out of there. Where one night, with a mysterious fog, they all just disappeared. How did they get the mist? Now, after these explorers, after making their way across the site and avoiding the guard dog stationed outside... They found the bunker and military buildings in a state of abandonment. Possessions and equipment were strewn across the base. Icy water had filled the bunker, yet clues were still to be found inside. One group described the military bunker as a quiet and lonely dark place, something like a maze with lots of corridors and rooms. Super scary. A book was found that contained a log of messages sent by UVB-76. The ethereal signal that had fascinated the world for years now had a physical presence, along with confirmation that it had been run by the Russian military. But the mystery still continues to this day. Sporadic voice messages are still emitted. Legions of listeners tune in via radios and online streams every day. And you can even listen online to the UVB-76 signal. 
Um, I just checked um, because I was noticing some red flags on the computer, and the computer's been acting up the entire time we've been here. Mercury's um, in retrograde. We have actually been listening the entire time to UVB 76. Really? So, so that just came all, in? All of that background noise during uh, Everest's story was actually UVB 76. Yeah, that's that's how terrifying it is. Yeah. Basically hijacked your stereo. Yeah, yep. why, are they, why are they pumping it? Like, normally people have to... To decide to listen to it, they decided to broadcast it into our. Why not? It's port? like, yeah, like I mean, I, it seems like they didn't want to get popular. Once they started getting popular, then they had to, you know, abort mission and move elsewhere. And now here they are coming in with us. The 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 fact that there was the story of the fog and the evacuation of the base and That's stuff really seems like creepy. really yeah, like a little spooky bit more uh, more spooky than just like an unknown radio signal. I don't yeah. like this. Uh, I'm not a fan I also of don't like that this guy came in here with this story. Like, who the fuck? Like, yeah, who just shows up as a realtor? Is <laughs> like, by the way, I've got a story. Like, like a more that fan, way, yeah. man. Yeah, all right, fair enough. He probably had like something geared up. He thought he was going to get to. So the spookier part oh, is shit. yet to come. Damn, Even spookier. All right. Listeners have tried to triangulate the new location of the new signal. Unlike yeah. before, it seems that the UVB-76 signal is now emanating from multiple transmitters across Russia. Oh. No way. Oh. It's getting more brazen. They've narrowed it down to three possible locations, but they haven't quite figured it out yet. Now, the purpose for this signal remains unknown. They think that maybe there's, there's a quote-unquote official explanation where they try to use the signal to measure changes in the ionosphere. But people don't accept that as true because it seems far less sinister than what we'd like to believe it is. Now, the fan favorite conspiracy is that UVB 76 is the audible version of Russia's Dead Man Switch system. Oh, You're familiar yeah. with the concept, yes? I yes. am. I am not, no. So, a Dead Man Switch is basically. You know, you watch a movie and the guy's like, if you kill me, the bomb blows up because mm-hmm. I have the switch in my hand and my hand will release right. the trigger. Basically like that, where if Russia is attacked by nuclear bombs at any moment, the signal ceases to exist, which triggers a counter-strike back at their attackers. Ah. Yep, mutually assured destruction. Yep. That's what it is, meaning that, you know, you're going to get us, but we're going to get you too. What's the uh, the final uh, quote? The final countdown! The machine has in war games, the only way to win... Is to not play. Want to play a game? Now, of course, they say this is not the official purpose of the signal, but in reality, no one really knows. That's super spooky. Yeah, You're not allowed to give yourself your own outro <laughs> trail. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a really big this fan. This guy is really uppity, He's man. a big fan, but he knows exactly what he's doing. He just did the intro and the outro. Let's take a little break. Let's figure out why the hell the Russians now know where we are. Yeah, I mean, how they pick us out of, you know, like, you know, everyone. We're gonna the, dead man twitch us. Ooh, the, oh, dead man. No. oh so I, I didn't even think about shit. that. Why'd you say something like that? Let's get out of here. So we have to keep broadcasting forever? Yeah, we just okay. get, we can't stop. We yep. can't stop. There's no way we're selling this place. Sorry, sorry, uh, uh, Everett Whiskey Mouth. Everest uh, Whiskey Mouth. Well, Everest and Carson. African Mastodon. Take Thank a you, little African break. Mastodon, for showing we're up. We're gonna go into automation. You're gonna listen to some music for a little bit. You're listening to Ford Fritz. Welcome back to Fort Fritz. Um, we kind of ran into some difficulty with our radio, our communication system. For whatever reason, started intercepting a weird, garbled, extraterrestrial. I mean, it was definitely terrestrial, but it was kind Russian. of a... Russian. 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 Yeah. UVB 76, man. It was something weird. Um, oh, God. Just started taking over the stereo for no damn reason. Kaz, your stereo. Kaz is in the back now, and he's holding up wires. I can only assume he's going to rewire Taking my stereo. Taking a look back here. Um, yeah, but there's wires everywhere, man. Well, I mean, this is a big-ass stereo. Why would... You had, it was hooked up to the intercom. I don't know. It's like stereos everywhere. Really? really? Was what it? What the hell is this? What? What? What the Christ, hell? What the hell? What the frick, man? Who's throwing the wires if you're not touching anything right there now? There is... You guys remember Robbie and Bobby? Of There's another course, yeah. damn moving doll back behind the stereo equipment. Are you serious? Oh, God. 
Is it Dobby? Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Look wait. over. Oh, Eliza Beth! Eliza Beth, what's Eliza going on? Eliza Beth? Oh, oh, man. Wait, oh. you know her? I haven't seen her in a while. Come on over here. Little three foot high five. There you go. You, you, it's good to see you. You're looking good. Did you lose wood? <laughs> I'm kidding. What you look exactly the same <laughs> as funny. always. It's great to see you. You have a great day. You have a great day, girls. Yeah. Good what to a see sunny you, disposition she had. She's just walking off down uh, the hallway now. It's to a just possessed doll, dude. I don't know why you guys are freaking out so much. Where, it, uh, where is she going now, though? Oh, she's okay, probably going to go to make some drinks. She's really good for that. She always makes sure. Dolls you know, and drinks, she's, man. You know, we're talking uh, daiquiris. We're talking Well, I just saw her run across the hallway. Oh, yeah, she's quick. That she's was quick. A skitter. That was a skitter. And then That's really terrifying. Skittering dolls are terrifying. She's probably going to get yeah, some yeah. fresh limes or something. That's what she does. So, mean, that's okay, not, obviously you know a lot about Eliza Beth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's cool, man. Why? Cool. Okay. How do you right. know her? Like, what? She's just a possessed doll. I mean, I mean, she's a possessed That's doll. That's a bad she's, thing. She's really good at uh, working with stereos and making daiquiris. I mean, ah, she just person. ran across again. She didn't oh, work yeah, she's on getting the ice. stereo. She's getting ice. I've seen that, that was before. an entire machine of ice that she had, though. Oh, yeah, she just carries that. She's insanely strong. You don't want to mess with her. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I mean, I don't know why you guys are freaking out. I mean, Robbie is one thing. We heard about Robert the doll, but, I mean, you guys never heard the story about Ruby the doll? Oh, I have not. We've talked in the past about the world's first traveling museum of the paranormal and the occult. A horrific idea! Where haunted, possessed, and particularly evil objects are currently on tour around America. What can go wrong? You gotta get the word out, man. No, Not everyone believes this. Yeah, yeah, so you need to get tactile with these possessed <laughs> Show demonic up objects. look at my possessed things. Spread the bad luck around, make sure everybody knows it's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. mess yeah. with them. You gotta yeah. help. You gotta help. Yeah. What's up, bros? Scary dolls for sale. <laughs> this guy's all about sale. He's a, he's a ABC over here. He's yeah, always being he's definitely in realtor school. Definitely got like a Shkreli <laughs> vibe to him. Whatever that guy yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Martin Shkreli. Uh, you mean my hero? God, you mean. <laughs> Job bless. I'll fight Job you. Bless. I re. We're all I re. Well, one of their artifacts is Ruby the haunted doll. Before hitting the road, Ruby had spent the last few decades shoved in a cardboard box in an attic. Just like all haunted dolls usually should be. Ruby was a family heirloom of sorts, but more feared than cherished. Now, sure, she is far from visually pleasant, but there was something more. She had, was a, she, she had a good personality. personality. It just kind of, you know, missing hair, funny, one eye kind of going away. You know, just it's just not exactly the most visually pleasant doll you've ever seen. She hit all the spots of the haunted doll bingo card, moving on her own accord. Emitting eerie sounds and even smells. Check. Oof. Like what? And just Dull like, farts. like sulfur. Dull like farts. Dull it's always farts. sulfur, Dull isn't farts. it? Dull farts. Yeah. yeah. There's a very sulfury, I find. Yeah, whiskey ass. They're drinkers, too. Whiskey like, ass. Oh, she had whiskey ass. Trust me. Ruby oh, yeah. had some whiskey <laughs> ass. <laughs> <laughs> really. I mean, she. You know, once you know more about Ruby, you'll understand. She likes to party. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's a crystal. But wait. There's more. What? It was said that anyone who held her would start to feel uneasy. You have headaches, exhaustion, and most commonly, overwhelming nausea. <laughs> now, it seems that Ruby was originally owned by a young girl a very long time ago, and this poor girl died at a very young age, and it is said that she was holding Ruby at the time of her death, and her soul is now forever attached to Ruby. The family that originally owned Ruby were all very much God fearing Christians who couldn't believe that a doll would be haunted. But after years of odd occurrences tied to Ruby, even they had to call in a medium in an attempt to help the little girl's spirit to move on. And a medium medium. No, she was an extra large medium. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Zing. How do you think the Christians like reconcile that? Like at some point, are they just like, uh, they had to get to the point where they're like, all right, uh, maybe there's something to this, I don't know. Uh, no. It's we Satan. Prayed. Satan trying to fight God through doll farts. <laughs> <laughs> the classic tale told throughout it's, the ages. As, kid, as kids, we all heard that. Yeah, we all heard that one in Bible school, always. Eternal Quick aside, struggle. I immediately heard Courtney Love going, Doll farts. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> Showing off her bruised inner thighs. Like, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> so hot. So hot. Now, even with the help of the medium... It didn't change. So the family got into the habit of passing Ruby from family to family, going from attic to attic, with a series of creepy occurrences and chronic illnesses following. What was the pitch like? Like, here's like, this okay, thing we've that had makes her long sick. enough. 
you got to take her now. That's right. it. You know, That's I mean, fair. we've had three weeks of Ruby. Now it's your tar- term, Uncle Jim. No, no, she's totally cool. You'll have a great time. Just don't and hold her or smell her. Yeah, just uh, look at her from ten feet away. You know, Meemaw really wanted you to have this creepy doll. <laughs> she told me right before she passed. Of <laughs> now, Meemaw wants you to have this doll, and she <clears throat> wants you to take it, cherish it, and keep it in the attic, and never touch it or look at it. <laughs> That was very specific, late Mima. <laughs> Mima had written instructions. Now, finally, a member of the family felt that Ruby deserved a better home and brought her to the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and the Occult. And it seems that maybe this is exactly what Ruby wanted. Oh, God. What do you mean? Now she can wreak havoc on the nation. All will die at the foot of Ruby. Right. It's like a traveling addict that she gets to go and spread her malice <laughs> yeah. all over the world instead of just her, her plague just of hatred. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You're pestilent. Now on tour, Ruby has begun to have a completely different effect on those who come in contact with her. While the original family felt sickness and dread while holding Ruby, people now are feeling something different. Over half the people who hold Ruby now say they feel overwhelming feelings of familiarity or a maternal feeling towards her. Many people would unconsciously start to rock back and forth while holding Ruby like they were holding a real baby. This is something that you can, it's a hands-on yeah, display? You, yeah, you can actually hold Ruby. We and this is, just from, this, uh, this is just from a year ago. Now, some would even start breaking down in tears while holding Ruby. The curators of the museum say they have seen people hold entire conversations back and forth with them, and while they're holding Ruby, they'll start bouncing Ruby unconsciously on their knee, Whoa. or rocking her in their arms, and even burping her without realizing what they were doing. But when it was pointed out that they were treating the doll like an actual baby, they would be shocked, and they couldn't believe that was happening. Minutes ago, they were terrified, and now they're getting the same responses as if they had a real baby. It's as if Ruby wants people to know that she's not bad or evil at all, just misunderstood. Like Courtney Love. (laughs) Not unlike Courtney Love. And maybe she's just a little prankster after what happened last year. The Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and the Occult took their wares to the 20th Anniversary Haunted America Conference. A woman in attendance, Lisa Taylor Horton, checked out all the artifacts, but never touched, held, or photographed anything. Then, the last night of the conference, it was all wrapping up. All the artifacts were packed away, and the patrons had a late-night seance. Always a great idea. And then, a cocktail party. Afterwards, <laughs> Dude, I want to go to this. It's, I mean, come on. It, it sounds, sounds rad. Awesome. Sounds like Greek life. It's got booze and spirits. They're like, all right, let's put away all of these spirits who are still clinging on, you know? Like, the afterlife is calling you. It's not, you know... We- you're not missing out on anything right. at all. Hey, let's go to the cocktail party. All right. Let's and then you some, get some different sort of spirits. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You took my joke, man. I hate you. I'm not your real dad. <laughs> You'll never be my real dad, not even if there's a fire. <laughs> that how fathers are chosen in your yes. world? Yes. <laughs> Someone has to take the reins on this situation. Oh, hell. Who's my new dad? <laughs> I learned it from watching you. <laughs> now, afterwards... Lisa went to her room, plugged in her phone, and went to sleep. It was like a little after 2 a.m. That morning, Lisa and her friends checked out of the hotel and went to lunch before heading home. That's when Lisa discovered her phone was almost dead, even after being plugged in all night. Then she looked through her photos and found that the last photo taken was of Ruby. Of course, Lisa did not take the photo. No, God, no. But the scary part is is that the picture... At a timestamp of 2.46 a.m. Oh, my God. After she after put Lisa oh, went to sleep. Man. And hours after Ruby had been packed away. Oh, my God. So, what happened to change the spirit of Ruby? Did being on tour and being held by and appreciated by so many different people change her? Maybe poor Ruby felt neglected by her family, being shuttled back and forth from dusty attic to dusty attic, forgotten in a cardboard box. Maybe, just maybe, bump possessed objects aren't evil at all. Maybe they're just misunderstood. So maybe you guys shouldn't freak out when you saw Eliza all right, back. All right, all right. You know, she's just doing, you know, she's over there <laughs> whipping up some badass daiquiris you don't hear that. And she's she's doing a great job, so just don't judge. Just don't judge. I'm judging you right now. Oh, I expected that. Whiskey mouth. You it's know, a whiskey myth. Sure it is. It says whiskey mouth on his car. I gotta say, she just uh, delivered seven pressed and dry clean suits that Felix had. Check out this number right here. It's a banana Ooh. yellow. Whoa. With a, 
Not like a Nehru, what's it called? The Nehru collar. Nehru, Nehru. yeah, it's that nice one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think Harvey eight. would wear that with pride. Mm. Well, would he really? And a mustache. Really. Do you think just like a solid white shirt with no belt underneath, or just a solid I'm black shirt with no belt? No shirt, no shirt, no chest hair everywhere. Chest. With a belt or no belt? Belt, no belt, just belt. Socks nothing, or no socks? Nothing but belt. Just, just wear belt? the belt. Just wear the belt. Nothing else. You're good. I can, I can do You're that. Good. That there reminds me of a store I'm opening called Nothing But Belt. You guys should check it out. You really? stole that from me, bra. You, you me? stole it from me, man. Okay, okay. But I do want to bring this up because I'm very embarrassed by this. But I actually speak fluent, bra. I hate to get on this. Okay, look, bra. This is all total BS. You know, you just completely jocked my idea. Oh my god! I just realized something, bro. What? You are the famed. Moon Daddy from the Three Greeks Letter Fraternity. What? I don't want to call you out in front of your friends. You were in a frat? No. Were you in a frat? No. Oh, yeah. I have the VHS tapes to prove it. Are you kidding me? Bro, I told you to roast those last time at the meeting. Oh, Oh, no. no. Moon Daddy's a bro. No, no. no, no, no. I speak bra. I speak. I studied. No, I studied among the bra, okay? I was like, you know. You fraternity. Cash, check this out, right? Hold on. We can get to it right now. Man, Daddy, uh, would you like to go outside and just uh, look up at the stars, Bromo? Dude, what am I, fairy? I mean, no, no, that'd be great. great. Oh, he don't. He's totally moon daddy. Wait until we tell Nick and Angela they are going to freak out. They are going to have a conniption. Bro, fist bump. All right. All right. I feel good. I feel good. I can't. I'm honestly disgusted. I can't believe. Disgusted? He's he's a yeah, I mean, you, you probably feel, feel like a bro, really good. like a bra. Uh, dude, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's funny. Every hey, time. hey, you bras! I I saw a couple of keggers <laughs> outside. <laughs> what? And, and, yeah, <laughs> are there chicks there? I, ch- I think there's some Molly to everybody. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 Come on, me, daddy. Okay, okay, a couple of kegs. Okay, yeah, a couple of kegs. We do. A couple of chicks. A couple of Mollies. A couple of chicks. Molly. Molly. Some Molly's. Is there, there butt chugging? Some Subway sandwiches. Oh, oh, bro, we're going to get this dude. We're going to get in there. We're going to hit that guy. We're going to hit these shakes. We're some Molly. They're like, no, no. Man. We're going to get a butt chug, and they're going to butt chug us. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Let's this go outside. Terrible. Oh. Perfect. Let's go chug butts. All right. We're going to head outside and, and chug some butts, I guess. Uh, you guys are listening to 4 Fritz. Welcome back to Fort Fritz. We are broing out in the yard right now. I've got two uh, scantily clad frat dudes. And actually, now that he took his shirt off, you can see he does, in fact, have the frat tattoo. It's like three triangles or Yo, whatever. Bro, I don't know. Of it's course, I got a tri- it. Dude, it's not a tattoo. It's branded on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's it's a night, man. It was a hell of a night. Yeah, yeah. we took like 800 Xanax. Remember? Oh, yeah. I, I drank like that. all the anger that. Yeah. You know, yeah. you remember when we partied, no. Fritz, Fritz? I gotta say, I hate what's happening right now. Uh, yeah, and I at am, the same time, I can't really control it, and GDI. I have to just kind of go along with it. This is the problem with bros: is once they start getting Budweiser in their system, it's difficult to really convince them of anything. It's Bud Light Lime. Yo, bro, you still understand? Three Greek letters fraternity for life. Read it right on the book. Look at yeah, that, yo. Look yeah. at that. I will, bro. I will say yeah. there, there yeah. is a crazy amount of people here for the kegger. Yeah, you're a crazy amount of people. Totally got you. Totally yeah. got you, yeah. you yeah, friend. What are you, a cop or something? Cop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a realtor. I have a license. Everest and Moon Daddy, was this something that you guys fired for beforehand? Oh yep. man, we just went totally went on MySpace and, yeah. MySpace, and okay. Flickster, Angel, Graham, and Angel wow. Fire. And yeah, yeah, I just yeah. totally got that, <laughs> man. Geocities.com yeah. Geo- for life! Yeah! yeah. 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 You yeah. look yeah. us up on S. Jeeves, son. <laughs> Ask Jeeves about me. What, was that supposed to be funny, You trying to bro out, man? You trying to bro out, dude? That was funny? lame. No, I just that like, was lame, bro. Out, man. He's nothing but a GDI. That was a pro no. A that was a pro no no. Oh, no. I think I'm yeah, growing out a little did. bit now. You're, yeah. you feel it? Oh, oh, you feel, feel it? it. Yeah. All right, that means only one thing. Jagerbomb! 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 
we could have done this from the get go. Uh, that, that didn't sound really bro. The one thing about bros, Fritz, you gotta understand is you're never bro we enough unless you have like the ass yeah, brain. I mean, like, calls bro. I'm just getting warmed up. Yeah. All right, this is Crosbro Kramer let over us, here. Let us. Yeah, I watch Seinfeld. Right, right. It's funny. It's not as good as Friends because I'm a frat bro. It yeah, is man, funny. Jennifer Aniston, yo. Jennifer Aniston. That's man. right. Nipples all yeah. day let us, long. Yeah, nipples all day. Let us slap your balls, bro. Ha <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> ha. You want to do that? No homo. No homo. Yeah, yeah, football. Did you idiots start a fire over here? What the hell is this? This is like burnt Did up. Did you not? I did not. Did you not start a fire? I did not. Just we're just trying to keep people warm. It's in the Constitution. It's in the Constitution. Right, right. Bill, you're a cop, you fire have to right. tell me. You're a cop, right? You have to tell me. I am a cop. I knew he was a cop. Fresh, are you the homeowner here? Homeowner. <laughs> I don't know. Are you a cop? Uh, yeah, bro, you cop. He doesn't have to answer the question. In this capacity, I think I'm going to have to oh, act as the cop. The, uh, then, the then, yes, sir, I am. Yes, sir. All right. Well, hold on. He's a secure cop. Debroify yourself okay. well, he's and right. explain okay. to me how okay. this, what I'm going to call probably 50 square feet of vegetation back here has been, I'm going to call it nuked. It doesn't even look like a fire has happened. This looks like when you like microwave lettuce or something. This is like just wilted grossness. Yo, man, I have that in the frat every day. That's my yeah. lunch, man. A little microwave lettuce. Yeah. Keeping it fucking low carb, yo. Yeah, what are you, CSI Miami with your words? It sounds like it sounds like you're describing microwave cabbage. I, I, I didn't have a All cabbage All of this, it looks like wilted and like just decayed almost. It doesn't even look like there's a, there's a fire. It looks like maybe it's been... Subjected to some kind of microwaves or something. Have the bros been messing with the microwave? Yeah. Bros, okay. Words. Fritz here, Man Daddy Everest. Come on, we're fans, What's right? We're fans. Oh, Daddy right, right now. You can believe you know? my character change, man. Man Daddy. Yeah, well, that's Daddy. Daddy. He hasn't figured it yeah. out. Right there. Get his name right. Right there, hey, man. Listen, I don't uh, like how you're talking to this fuzz right now, man. We need to get some answers straight yeah, before get things get straight. a lot weirder for us, okay? We have a lot of people out there enjoying the keggers. Okay. Let, like let me good. talk to the fuzz. Tranquilo. Kaz, what are you what are you getting at? I think we have another classic case of a Fort Brent's UFO, and we've been distracted by the inane mammerings of the bros. Mammerings. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was coming. I'm worried that we that we're gonna have another close encounter here possibly of the second kind <gasps> oh my god what's the second kind what? the second kind means that there are physical effects to the ground obviously uh do you guys ever hear of the cash landrum incident how do you uh how do you spell it cash landrum k-a-s-h dash l-a-n-d-r-u-m reported incident of a unidentified flying object in uh 1980 in Texas. Dayton, Texas, to be specific. On December 29th, they seem to like the end of the year. Seems like that's a common UFO thing. Um, Betty Cash and her friend Vicky and Vicky's seven-year-old grandson, Colby, were all driving home uh, from a night out. They were having some dinner. Uh, about 9 p.m., they're driving down a country Texas road and they see a light pass overhead they think nothing of it it's they're about 30 miles away from the houston international airport so they figure it's just another airplane passing over the top a few minutes later they drive and they see what appears to be the same light only much much closer and um much brighter they as they get closer they can see that the light appears to take a sort of geometric shape it looks vaguely like a large diamond in fact so large that it appears to be the size of the local Dayton water tower and we have kind of a, we have a water tower down the street you guys know how big those things are it's like pretty large Ms. Cash and her friend uh, they were born again Christians and they believed that they were seeing the second coming of Jesus always so they uh, believe that this giant flaming light emitting diamond was not going to hurt them that it was jesus so this looked like it was on fire it was a so this is interesting uh, jesus normally when you get the ufo at least from the from the stories that we've had so far it's it's um you know formless light orb or you know kind of moving around in shape this seems to have a very specific defined shape they said it was diamond shaped with the top and bottom points flattened off and at the bottom point there was um, a sort of 
intermittent emitting cone of fire that they described. Ooh. There was the, these flames that were Bad shooting ass. out of the bottom of this yeah. diamond. Yeah. And uh, from from witness accounts, at least from from Vicky and uh, from the Cash Landrum account. They said that it seems to be sort of hovering by the the effect of this fire. Like when the, the fire would dissipate, the the diamond would slightly lower, the fire would kick back in, and it would raise itself back up. So, I mean, like 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 a hot air balloon. Correct, exactly. Sort of like almost what I would say, sort of a proto UFO, right? Like we think of them as just zipping around with no real like energy being expelled. This seems to have actually been burning something to keep itself up. Okay, so uh, when you. When scientists chart stars, they always note brilliance, right? As right. like plus two point whatever. Um, did they have any kind of like brilliance marker? I don't no, I don't think so. These are just like a couple of people in a in an old mobile in Texas. They were they were they thought it was I guess to to apply it to some amount of measurement that we could that we could tell it was about as bright as the lights they would expect to see from like a passenger plane flying overhead. That's at a exact. Distance. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm. Right. At least to. initially, and then when they got closer, they realized it was it was obviously much closer, much brighter, and much hotter. They uh, the flames that were coming out of this this object um, cooked the ground, cooked, cooked pretty much everything in the general vicinity. Uh, the the woman remembers having to, or told police that she had to use her jacket to open the car door back up because it was so hot that they burned their hands. Uh, at one point, there was, uh, during the civil case, which we'll get more into that, uh, there was evidence that she had pressed her hand into the, the vinyl dashboard of the car. It had softened so much from being heated that she was able to make an impression of her hand in the dashboard. Um, That's so, not good. Basically, this car was extremely, extremely hot. They pulled up close. They thought they were seeing Jesus. They wanted to obviously be the first ones <laughs> on the scene. Let's go get a good look at the Jesus. Well, you are right. I mean, you see Jesus, you want to like it's flaming uh, Jesus, honey. Let's get as close as possible. You want to get there before everyone pisses him off and like <laughs> he's in a exactly, good mood. Right. Like you, you know, first in line. Hey, Jesus. Like, how's it going? How's Earth? I want a high five, flaming Jesus. <laughs> so. <laughs> so uh, Jerome Clark was just somebody who uh, gained some information on the incident uh, wrote uh, to describe it the object intensely bright and a dull metallic silver was shaped like a huge upright diamond about the size of the Dayton water tower with its top and bottom cut off so that they were flat rather than pointed small blue lights ringed its center and periodically over the next few minutes flames shot out of the bottom flaring outward creating the effect of a large cone Every time the fire dissipated, the UFO floated several feet downwards, but then when the flames blasted out again, the object rose to about the same distance. Again, these flames appear to have scorched, and not only scorched, but, and we'll get into this a little bit later, uh, radioactively cooked the grass and vegetation around the edge of this this uh, road. It was... Like a new uh, wave. Right, they went in and, and did uh, actual like spectra analysis on the stuff, and it was... It had decayed and frayed in the way that things do when they're like exposed to high levels of, of microwaves, microwave radiation. And this is also, I guess, slightly um, confusing because you would think, all right, so we've got it, right? Aliens, microwaves, they're coming down, they're weird, they're radioactive. Yeah, but why would they use like microwaves to deforest crops I think it, like, I, they, I, I think it was it, it, the the burnt areas was the result of the uh, the craft the the exhaust from the craft the flames or whatever that were coming out of the bottom of this thing but, so but it just I mean the combination of flame and microwave is like those are two different sorts of energy right so it's like are they uh, uh, maybe like, the it'd be like a new wave oven you, they're using convection and conduction microwave heats from the inside right right they like excites the water molecules right. they heat things up but uh, I think all of this, uh, to me, initially starts to point to, you know, people are going to think like, oh, well, it's extraterrestrial aliens. I think the interesting thing about this incident is the fact that uh, not only did they see this insanely, apparently Jesus-y, di- flaming diamond thing, but also that there were 23 uh, army helicopters accompanying this flying diamond. Uh, many what? of them... Uh, identified later as CH-47 Chinook, the tu- the dual rotor, the big giant yep. du- dual rotor Whoa. ones. Um, and this actually becomes interesting later in the story. Uh, af- after the fact, uh, Cash and Landry, the Cash Landry party, was able to end up talking to apparently one of the pilots who was uh, piloting one of these, these helicopters. 
Uh, they f- it flew into Dayton, um, and uh, the grandmother of this little boy, Colby, the 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 seven year old, uh, remembered her uh, he him getting very agitated, like seeing the helicopter apparently like triggered him back into thinking it was going to be the UFO. This like really you know sort of strange experience for him. Uh, they went up to talk to the helicopter pilot in the hopes of just kind of you know seeing what happened, like what you know what was going on, and uh, they told them, hey, we were there when the UFO like the ufo landed we have like the burns and stuff to 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 show for it and uh the they were told that the guy immediately hushed hushed up walked away and was told not to talk to them and ushered them off the military base apparently it was uh uh, several different witnesses saw not the flaming diamond the the flaming jesus diamond but (laughs) several of the um police um, scanners and other witnesses, uh, dete- one of them being Detective Lamar Walker of the local Dayton police, also allegedly saw several of these Chinook helicopters in the area, which is um, sort of an uncommon sight. I mean, they weren't really, um, it's not a, you know, heavily militarized area to see these. Here come the black helicopters again. Oh, right. you know, it must be Wednesday. These are camps. After this sighting, they naturally were extremely freaked out. They went home, and that night all fell extremely ill. Really? Either the, there were general symptoms of nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, Ooh. weakness, burning sensations oh, in their oh, eyes and uh. skin, um, feelings that they were suffering from extreme sunburns. These are all side effects of taking Alaisha. So Betty Cash appears to have the, the worst of the injuries. Um Instead of getting better after several days, her symptoms worsened. She was starting to receive several large blisters on her skin. Uh, she was actually taken to the emergency room a few days later and basically told them that she could not walk. She she was in so much pain. She had lar- lost large clumps of hair and skin. Um, and she was back in the hospital. They released her after a day. She was back in the hospital within two weeks. And that was started a stint of over... Two dozen hospital visits. This woman was extremely, extremely sick after this. Wow. Which leads into this being one of the only actual UFO recorded UFO incidents that ends in a civil court case. They she's she was attempting to get someone to help her pay for the like the medical damage. Are that, you kidding me? Really? She I've, suffered. I've never heard of any kind of UFO case that actually went to a civil trial. Uh, it says here that the uh, radiologist who examined the witness's medical records for MUFON. Uh, said that we have strong evidence that these patients have suffered secondary damage to ionizing radiation, and it is also possible there was an infrared component as well. How, um, how could someone fake that, or why would they fake that? Right. You know, I mean, that's not something that you just encounter in your everyday life. It's the most elaborate form of suicide I've ever heard. <laughs> if that is the case. Standing in front of a microwave and being like, all right, someone's <laughs> going to pay for this. Before. So they did have. Uh, uh, about two years later, it would have been in 1982, uh, Lieutenant Colonel George Sarin of the Department of the Army Inspector General uh, did say that they began a formal investigation into the matter um, and they claimed that they could not corroborate the existence of any of the helicopters or flying objects that were uh, that Miss Landry and Miss Cash had seen. So obviously uh, these women made up the fact that they were basically cooked alive in their Oldsmobile on the side of the road in Dayton, Texas, and the government doesn't know anything about it. Yeah, of course. Easy. I mean, come on. We've all done that old, hey, let's fool the government by sure. microwaving, by microwaving ourselves. ourselves. Yeah, uh, come on. It's an old... It's, it's, it's like the, It's basically like the next generation of the uh, uh, flaming poop bag on the porch, you know? Huh. It's, it's just, just, an, old, it's just an old gambit. Yeah, those are fun. So, eventually, obviously, through the the horror that they went through and the illnesses and sort of injuries that they suffered uh they were both kind of at a loss they didn't really know who to talk to so uh they reached out to their senators and asked what should happen what 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 should they do the senators suggested that they actually file a complaint with the bergstrom air force base which would have been the nearby military base um and to seek compensation from them to hire a lawyer and sue them Wow. Uh, so their attorney, Peter Gersten, took on the case, sued the government for $20 million, obviously lost. Um, the district, U.S. District Court dismissed their case, noting that they had no proof that there were helicopters or a large flaming diamond. You're right. <laughs> um, <laughs> and later on, this woman went on to be hypnotized on mainstream media on a TV show called That's Incredible. 
That's right. incredible. Yeah, that's a, yeah from the eighties, right? That's uh, incredible. It's, all, it's like late seventies and eighties, and I remember because well, old. it was uh, it was in oh. the Black Flag song, right? Uh, yeah. TV party tonight. Oh, yeah. that's incredible. Uh, Points. Oh yeah, there you right. go. Above that's incredible. <laughs> uh, all right, I have a punk rock license. You guys are high fiving now. Wow, you're high fiving. I'm not trying to. It's like I've been getting rid of the bro part, but my uh, the left side of my body just keeps on high fiving with just it completely unconsciously. It's like idle hands for bros. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, to this day they haven't had any. Uh, both of them died, I think, actually. Yeah, Betty Cash died at the age of 71 in 1998, and Vicky Landrum died on September 12th, 2007. So they are both not with us, but the story of this weird UFO encounter and the weird helicopters and the burns that they suffered and the burns that were, I guess, incurred on the side of the road remain a mystery. So that was the Cash Landrum UFO incident, correct. correct? Okay. You know, it's funny that we started off with uh, Everest Whiskeymouth coming over. Uh, That's right. Trying That's name. Didn't wear it out for whatever reason to get me to sell this house. And yeah. everyone knows this house is pretty badass. Yeah, You're pretty badass. I mean, we've got a kegger raging behind us right now. I mean, uh, uh, a party with beer. Oh, but, but it's just chicken. weird how I we started off listening leaves. to music and then... Everest comes over and tells us about UVB seventy six yeah. was a, and so basically it was a radio station. It was a number station uh-huh. that was nicknamed the buzzer mm-hmm. because of a looping tone yeah. that was manually generated. It was a manually yep. generated buzzer tone. That's right. Some Russian dude did it. It probably bro. No one knows really why this is still out there because you can listen to it. Right. You can That's still right. go to websites I'll and listen find to it live. My SoundCloud DJ. Mount Everest, bro, 69, 420 blazing. But um, a lot of people think that it's still kind of stunting because uh, no one really knows what it's doing. So Mm. it could be there for impractical reasons. That's right. But one thing that did happen was in 2010, its purpose became known in that its purpose was unknown. Now we go to Ruby the Doll. Oh, yeah. Who is this haunted... Energy sucking young girl trapped in a doll, um, and uh, no one could really find out what was going wrong with the people who were holding it, and then suddenly feeling nausea, crying. Well, it's just I mean, burping and rocking the doll. It just well because originally it was uh, you know a family heirloom, and that um, a little girl owned it, and it said that she died with the doll in her arms. And so it's 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 not just that, that she's possessed that there's maybe she's attached to the doll, and so she got really upset about the way she's being shuttled back and forth. And now that she's being appreciated, like I'm not bad. I'm just you know an attached soul to the possessed doll. You know? Yeah, kind of like a prankster, right? Yeah, just that, that yeah. old chestnut. Kind of a misunderstood prankster. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like UVB seventy six. No yeah. one really yeah. knows what it's doing. Yeah, just something's going on. You no, know, don't be scared. Just kind yeah. of enjoy the ride. But yeah, then you blown up when you. <clears throat> When you have an actual civil case involving a UFO, which was the Cash Landrum incident in 1980, December 29th to be exact, this family sees a burning diamond. It's a cone of fire, and they don't know what it is. It could be misunderstood. Could be but Jesus. at the same time, they have physical evidence of heating and scarring. Correct. Via radiation. And, and, was- and, and, and that's a very specific thing. There's a difference between a burn and a radiation burn. Yes. Now, the UVB 76 incident in 2010, when the internet kind of found out that they had an unknown purpose, the military has Chinooks as evidenced by the Cash family, correct? Right. Uh, according to their, to their eyewitness account. So this could be actually two loosely related military events. Yeah, well, yeah. There's, there's yeah. A, definitely some uh, military involvement. Yeah, Cold War. Let me posit this: What if the Ooh. Cash Landrum UFO incident was a higher, more advanced technology of the UVB seventy six Dead Man Switch? They called it in. If so it that like radio station, radio tower. if that radio station does go offline, they have more mobilized units. They have more they're, giant if they're, Jesus if diamonds. If they are. Irradiating citizens. This could be the next step. But could see plot, that plot hole here. 
Why would U.S. military helicopters be escorting a Russian weapon over Texas? You know what? You're Shadow the one Cabal. in college. You're the one in the frat party. Why don't you tell me? Or should I just keep drinking? Yeah, <laughs> drink, drink it, bro. Yeah. I mean, you should really consider the social, economic, and global implications of what you're talking about. Because the fact of the matter is, is that maybe it's actually the concept of mutually assured destruction that we talked about before. That's that true. Maybe this is something where you agreed that if we've gotten to this point, that we're just going to completely ruin the entire planet and start off as a species. Is- or we're just going to do a bunch of shots, bro, and get <laughs> wasted! <laughs> and for a second, I thought you were a nerd. <laughs> You know or, what? You know, the other thing I said. Let's just keep drinking. Who cares, really, right? Am I right? Okay. You know what? The one thing that bros will always, like, really dig on what is that, um, slip and slide. You guys want to break the slip and slide? Hell out? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put some straw Put some lube beer on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Beer and lube. Have mm-hmm. you guys seen my leather bikini? Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, have, we have. have. Actually, I, I do remember, remember that from oh, that one episode. Because check out my... Hairway pants! Oh, oh, shit. Oh, bro, oh, look at his... God. <laughs> yeah, it's good, right? My butt. My butt looks good. Yeah, it does actually. It actually does. I mean, yeah. it's yeah, weird. It's it like, was nice, no homo. It's got a Smack sheen. My ass. It's got a sheen to it. All right, Smack what do you guys... it. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Now we're getting broed out. Oh, man, my hand hurts. That thing was like rock hard, man. Mm, muscle butt. That was like slapping granite. Um, Let's play so, some disc golf. Whoop, whoop. Before we get the disc golf out, uh, we had our host Fritz. That's right. Our co-host Lame. Moon Daddy. What up, bro? What up? What up? I am Kaz, and then we had Nerd. Everett Winston. It's Mc- Everest Whiskey Myth. Whiskey Myth. Everest Whiskey Myth. And this has just been the the worst thing of all You're time. The worst. So, I'm. Hopefully, we die back here. I don't know. Alcohol poisoning is a thing. <laughs> We'll see. We can you always listen up. in episode 25. This has been Fort Fritz. And despite what you may feel right now after listening to this nonsense, please, please continue to listen to our podcast. We're on all of the, the standard platforms that we've been on. Stitcher, Lipsyn, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube. Um, you can just shout out your window. Pray. If you say your prayers at night and you pray for Fort Fritz, we'll come to you. Um and then also Santa letters, same thing works. Like if you if you write us a letter and send it, um, Christmas time we'll get that and we'll we'll grant your wishes. So um, thanks for listening to Fort Fritz. 